Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video 17, Special Ex Expectations, uh, part three. So in this section, we've already talked about moments, central moments, the variance, we've defined that. Uh, we talked about the mean and variance of the discrete uniform. Last time, we went over an rth moment and an rth moment about the mean. We discussed the index of skewness, which was the uh, third uh, moment around the mean, e, whoops, e x minus mu cubed, and we talked, we introduced the moment generating function, very important in statistics. So today we're going to discuss the moment generating function techniques for generating moments. It's a moment generating function, we're going to generate those moments. All right, so from Laplace transform theory, really simple stuff, right? Uh, it can be shown that the existence of m of t for t between negative h and positive h implies that the derivatives of all order, all orders, exist at t equals zero. Once you get to zero, you can still take the derivative and it's zero. So that's what it means by all orders. Uh, this implies that m of t at t equals zero is continuous. That means or implies that it is permissible to interchange differentiation and summation uh, since the series converges uniformly. Okay, So with this, we can do what we're going to do. So let's take the first derivative, m prime of t. Now, this is a function of t, and this is where students have trouble. We're going to take the derivative with respect with t, not x. And it, it's very clear here, but as soon as you come over here and you start seeing x, you're tempted to take the derivative with respect to x. Don't do that. Take it with respect to t. It's a very different answer, okay? So, as I said, we can move this inside the summation because it converges uniformly. And so we have the derivative of e to the tx times f of x. But f of x doesn't have anything to do with t, so it can come out of the derivative. So I've moved it out back here, and we've got the derivative with respect to t of e to the tx. Remember that x is our constant here. So if I have d dx e to the 3x, you know that that is 3e to the 3x. But here, we're doing it with respect to t, the derivative with respect to t. And so the constant, again, is x. So x is what gets pulled down in front. And that's exactly what we see here, x uh, e to the tx times f of x. Now, similarly, we can take the derivative of the first derivative and get the second derivative. And so we have the second derivative of mt now becomes x squared, because that's the thing about e to the tx, right? Derivatives of e to the t, they replicate themselves. So each time we're taking with the derivative, derivative with respect to t, we get an x. So we now have x squared, e to the tx, f of x, okay? And the rth derivative, rth derivative uh, becomes sum of x to the r, e to the tx, f of x f of x, and that's r is any positive integer that works for that. Now, after we take the derivative, after the derivative, then we plug t equals zero. Not before. If you do it before, you're going to mess everything up. In fact, you won't have any t left to take a derivative of. So you would technically get zero, although you'll probably make the mistake and take the derivative with respect to x instead. Big mess. So please don't do that. So we take the derivative, then we set t equals to zero. When we do that, the first derivative of the moment generating function at t equals zero gives us e of x. The second derivative at t equals zero gives us e of x squared, and so forth to the rth derivative, we get e rate of x to the rth power. If, and that's a big if, the MGF exists, the moment generating function exists, then the first moment 
m prime of zero is mu, m double prime of zero minus the uh, first moment squared gives us e x squared minus e of x raised to the second power, or e of x quantity squared, and that is the variance. Okay. So we can use the MGF to get our means and variance. So let's do that with the geometric distribution. So if I have x distributed as a geometric distribution with parameter p, that's the probability of success, then write out, the first step is to write out our PMF. And we better make sure that we remember our space of x if we want credit. f of x equals qx minus 1 times p. And p is not equal to 0 or 1. It's between them. It's on an open interval, not a closed interval. q is 1 minus p. The mgf of x is m of t, and it's always e of e to the tx. And so you always write this. And if you always write this, it's much more likely you're going to get the right answer. So we have the summation. We still have e to the tx, but now we have to plug in f of x. And then uh, when we do that, we also uh, we can rearrange this. I want to pull out p, and I have q up to the x. If I have q to the x, I know I have a geometric distribution, don't I? But x minus 1 throws me off a little bit, um, so I'd have to rederive things. I don't want to do that. So I can write this. This is q, x, q minus 1, right? We add exponents. Well, q to the minus 1 is 1 over q, q to the x over q. That's what we've done here, and we end up with p over q, and then we have the sum of e to the tx times q uh, to the x. And then we can rewrite this as a geometric uh, e to the tx, so we can rewrite this, and we plug in for x, and if we're careful, then we see that we get q e to the t, and then we have q squared, e to the 2t, right? But q squared is q times q, and e to the 2t, we can decompose that into e to the t times e to the t. Remember, we add the exponents when they have the same base. So we're going backwards and breaking it out, and then the same thing for the third term. And so we see that we have these uh, q e to the t um, times one, to the first power, second power, third power. Okay. Now remember that uh, we're going to let um, w be a geometric random variable. So I'm going to let w equal q e to the t. Now, if it's a geometric series, remember that w has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. q is positive. e to the t is always positive. So we have to have that w is less than 1. Okay? And... So we have, we can rewrite this. Now we have this written as a geometric series, okay? But there is a caveat. You've got to look at the summation here. We don't start at zero. So we need to solve for that and, and adjust for that. So if I had started at zero, then this is the same as the first term. When i is zero, w to the i is going to be one. So I have one here. And then I have the rest of my summation from one to infinity. So this is what I want, so I solve for this, um, and uh, let's see. So by solving for this, I take this and subtract 1, and I end up with this e equation here. And so I know what this is, so I write that out. It's 1 over 1 minus w minus 1. Now 1, I multiply uh, by, I get a common denominator, so I multiply 1. 1 becomes 1 over w, 1, o, 1 minus w, 1 minus w. And so I subtract, making sure to keep my parentheses here so I don't get a ridiculous answer because it can't be negative. Um, so 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 
uh, minus a negative is a positive, I end up with a positive W over 1 minus W. I plug back in, I get QET over 1 minus QET. All right. So now that is just uh, this portion that is in the box. I still have P over Q to the outside. So I've taken this and I've plugged it in. And now I multiply. But here I've got a Q, here I've got a Q. I cancel those out and end up with P E to the T over 1 minus Q E to the T. But remember that Q E to the T, which was my W, W has to be less than 1. So I plug in here for W, Q E T, less than 1. I'm solving for T, so I, multi I divide both sides by Q here. And then I take the log of both sides, the natural log. So log, uh, natural log of E to the T is uh, just T. We learned that in algebra. And then I have log of 1 over Q. Well, when I have a division here, I subtract. I have log 1 minus log Q. Log 1 is 0. So I have negative log Q. So T is less than negative log Q. We have just derived the MGF of the geometric distribution. Let me clean this up a little bit. So the MGF of the um, geometric distribution is this whole thing. Without this, you don't have it. This is where it converges. So it's where T is less than the log, natural log of Q. So P E to the T divided by 1 minus Q E to the T. The mean of the geometric function, we're going to use the moment generating um, technique here. So we're going to take the derivative, uh, with, but at 0. But notice that I don't plug in 0 here. I take the derivative, and you know how to use the... Um, I hope you know how to use the uh, um, multiplication rule and the quotient rule. We're using the quotient rule here. The bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. We are careful with our algebra, and then we get down to here, uh, here, and here we plug in 0 for t. So e to the 0 is 1, so these become 1 here and we're left with p over 1 minus q squared. Well, 1 minus q is p, so I have p over p squared. One of those cancels out. The mean of the geometric is 1 over p. That's mu. Now, we take the second derivative with respect to t. Here, I didn't plug in the 0 uh, up here because I, I really don't want to confuse you. So, um, in fact, maybe I should put a t up here and say t equals 0. So we're going to take the derivative, and then after we're done, we're plugging in t equals 0. Don't do that until the end. We use the quotient rule again. We start with what I've circled here, and we take the derivative of that, because this is the first derivative. Taking the derivative of that gives me the second derivative, and you want it in the simplest form possible. By all means, do not... Oops. Sorry about that. Please don't start up here. Whoops. Here. Don't start there. You'll have a real mess. So we're going to go down to um, where I just raced the uh, lines around. Maybe I'll change this to red. We're going to start with this. It's the most simplified version before we plugged in 0. And we take the derivative of that. And we get this, and then we factor out. So I have 1 minus QET squared, 1 minus QET to the 1. I can factor out one of those from each uh, across both sides of the um, subtraction there. And I look, and I have P E to the T, and I have P E to the T, so I can factor that out. And I have to factor exactly. I have to be precise in doing this. So do that. When you're done, you've got um, Q, 1 minus QET to the fourth. I have 1 up here, so I cancel that and end up with 3. Okay, So I end up with a cube. I keep on simplifying, and this is EX squared, the expected of value of X squared, not the variance. I still have to subtract the mean squared. And when I do that, I get P Q over P squared. This is the variance of the 
um, geometric distribution. Okay, so you'll want to update your list of distributions. For, uh, with the geometric distribution on that page, you'll want to put the MGF. You'll want to put the mean. Uh, where'd the mean go? So you'll want to put the mean, which is right here, and you'll want to put the variance, which is here. Don't forget to scan in your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. Please make them neat for you so you can read them and review them and study. Update your formula sheets um, with and update your list of distributions in this case mostly. Um, you'll also, let's see, I think for this lecture that's about it. If you have questions, come to virtual office hours. If that still doesn't work for you, email me. We'll see you next time.